Welcome class. I am excited to be your instructor this semester for CIT 160 and I wanted to start out by sharing with you some tips and tricks to help you have a successful semester. Uh, and throughout the semester I'll be sharing with you supplemental videos and content like this one. So my first tip for you is to read and listen to not only everything that is in the course but everything that I share as well. Uh, my goal as an instructor is for you to need me as little as possible and that's a little bittersweet for me since I love interacting with you. But if you are ever waiting around for me during the week uh, in order to answer a question or to clarify something, then I start to feel like I'm failing you by wasting your valuable time. Uh, so that's why I've created some extra content to try to fill in the gaps that I've noticed over the several years of teaching this course. Um, oftentimes there are common questions, common concerns, common misconceptions. And so everything, uh, I encourage you to read everything and watch everything to the end. I have been very careful to keep my extra content short most weeks it's less than 30 minutes of video and that's less than one lecture session if you were to take this course on campus so um, I th it's not a lot so and, and later in the video I'll even share with you a tip on how to get through the videos even faster so stay tuned to that uh, just to reiterate one last time uh, I can't count the number of times each semester that I have a student ask a question where my response is Oh, I covered that in video such and such. Did you get a chance to watch that yet? And usually their answer is, uh, well, no. And then after going back and watching the video, they often realize that they had wasted several hours trying to figure out something that would have been easier had they just taken the 15 minutes to watch the videos for the week. So that's my first tip for you guys. Watch and read everything, right? It's highly important. So uh, that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the course itself, uh, particularly uh, the way it's laid out in iLearn3. Those of you who are very familiar with iLearn3, there's probably not a whole lot uh, of difference in here, um, but we do do a few things differently in this course, so it's worth paying attention here. So uh, most of you know, recognize this first page where we have the announcements uh, when you come into your course for the first time or when you click into your course each time. And in the announcements section is where I'm going to be sharing most of the supplemental content that I have for you, right? Um, and I will name it usually notes. It's one of my news items or one of my announcements. It's going to be called notes for the week. I'll usually share those on Saturday, but if you don't see it on Saturday, keep checking back because sometimes I may not get it out till Monday. But here it is. Here's where I'll usually put some supplemental videos, other videos that I can find. This is actually an updated version of one that I put out where things change for the semester. So I, so I, and, and then I, I put out an update. Uh, and several videos here. So usually, like I said, the notes sections are the most important. Sometimes I put some other fun things in there. Um, sometimes if something gets updated or something changes, we see other things throughout the week. Um, so there's that. Once again, those of you who have spent some time in iLearn3 know how the course is usually laid out by weeks, right? We've got week one through week 14, all separated into different courses. Now, this was, of course, when I clicked on the content section up here. Um, and each week as well, we have multiple folders inside that try to break down the week into the different types or the different phases of the week, the getting started, the preparation, assignments. And then there's usually some sort of a wrap up at the end of the, uh, of the week. So when you first start the course, though, there is the welcome and the tour. Uh, the welcome usually has some course specific stuff in there and the tours for those of you who uh, may not be super familiar with iLearn3 and want to just kind of brush up on a few things, right? Um, week one is the week that we're starting in, obviously. And inside of week one, there was a couple of things that I did want to talk about. We're actually going to talk a little bit about these things in a minute. Uh, but specific to week one and to the course in general, I wanted to address the textbook and the software. Uh, many people always ask about, do I need to buy the textbook? And the question is, no, you do not need to buy the textbook. There is, an on, there is a printed version available. Many people like to have the printed copy, and that's great. Go ahead and order it. But any chapter that we expect you to read will be embedded in the week. For example, here, week one, under assignments, you see chapter one, computer hardware. Every week you will have that. Uh, if you do decide to get the book, remember that there will be some differences between them because printed copies obviously take a little bit longer to update. So if there are differences, the online version is the more correct version. The other thing we can talk a little bit about is software. There are two main so pieces of software that you'll be using for this course. One of them is a simple text editor and the other one is a browser. The simple text editor that we recommend if you're using Windows is Notepad++. 
and if you're using a Macintosh, it's Text Wrangler. Now, the reason we recommend these is that we don't want you using some of these software packages out there that do too much for you and actually impede your learning progress, right? The simple text editors make it so that you are actually learning what we're asking you to learn. But they also have some good features in them, such as syntax highlighting, which makes code a little bit easier to read. You'll, you'll get a little bit more about that later on in the semester. The reason why we recommend Google Chrome as the browser right here is because there are a few things built into Google Chrome that uh, we will be leveraging throughout the semester. So we recommend Chrome for your testing of your code and for doing the troubleshooting that we will discuss later on in the semester. So those are the main pieces of things in week one that I wanted to make sure that, that were addressed right off the bat. The other thing we can mention real quick are the various ways that you can access content. Like we said here, everything's grouped by week, which is a really good way to look at things. Uh, but you can also go directly into the discussion boards if you know there's a specific one that you want to find and, and it's easier for you to get access to the discussion boards this way. Uh, same with quizzes and assignments, right? Quizzes, you've got all the quizzes here sorted by week, um, making those somewhat easy to find. And then assignments, which is something we don't really use a lot of in this semester, but our peer review journals, which we do once a week, are done in this format. So. Let's see, the very last one, kind of, of these top level things is the calendar. And the calendar is really the best way for you to see what's up and coming. There, Currently in the course, and I'm hoping this changes here shortly, so if what I'm saying doesn't pertain to you in, in future sections, that's great. There's been a schedule link or a schedule uh, uh, item inside of the weeks that try to give you a breakdown of what the schedule looks like. But the problem with those is it's really hard to adjust for all the different time zones, and so it's actually more confusing to try to give you a list of everything that's due. It's really better to, to come into the the calendar view, my preference is this list view here because it breaks everything down in this simple way. And then everything you see is broken down with your due date specific to your time zone right here, right, which is perfect, uh, much more user friendly. Now the downside to this, and, and we're cleaning this up every semester a little bit, gets a little bit better, is sometimes the way that the assignments are set up, this thing is a little bit confusing, particularly for an assignment that we have called the peer review discussion board. And that's where you're gonna be sharing your code with each other each semester. I'll actually post some videos about that for you to get more depth later on the peer review discussion boards. But in short, it's a discussion board that has two parts. One is your initial submission to each other, and then two is your um, reviewing of somebody else's code, right? And those are, you know, uh, due on Wednesday for your submission and due on Thursday every week for your reviewing of somebody else's. And that doesn't change each week, but they don't always reflect as cleanly in here as I'd like them to. So we're working on that. Uh, and hopefully that'll get better as time goes. But that's kind of the, the calendar, um, uh, navigating the content. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything other than that. We have the peer review discussion boards. The way that the week usually is broken down, we've got a reading. Uh, let me go into a little later week here, just to look here. Uh, we've got some preparation, which usually involves reading, uh, some tutorials and a quiz on the things that you've done. The assignments are usually involving some sort of a code. Uh, your peer review uh, interactions, that discussion board I just mentioned, and then the final code submission at the end of the week. There might be a few other things mixed in with additional discussion boards and things throughout the semester. And then, of course, at the end of the semester, you've usually got your journal and some sort of uh, uh, survey to kind of see how your week went and to just keep you uh, in check on that you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing. So the last thing I wanted to address real quick was uh, access to me this semester. Uh, I mentioned that I don't want to get in your way, but I do want to be available because obviously everything that I've tried to do is not going to answer all the questions every semester for everybody. So I do want you to have access to me. Um, the preferred access method is each week you will notice inside of the preparation section, oh, excuse me, the getting started section, we have a discussion board called the questions and conversations discussion board. Now that discussion board is intended for you to access me directly. All the rest of the discussion boards that I have in the course, I expect you guys to kind of interact with each other and deal with each other, uh, help each other. It's kind of the students teaching students section of the course. And so I try to be kind of sparse in those discussion boards, I am there even though you don't see me because I'm checking to make sure that nobody is sharing falsehoods and confusing people. But for the most part, I try not to interact there because that's yours. But if you need me and you're feeling like your questions aren't getting answered over there, come and drop a line in the questions and conversations for the week. And I'm watching those uh, very regularly and will try to answer your question as quickly as possible. And there are other smart students as well, usually each semester, that like to watch in there and answer questions for you guys as well. But I'm watching those very closely. Of course, if you have a 
a personal question, don't post it there. Send me an email and I will uh, get back to you through email if it's a personal thing. But if it's not personal, I prefer it to be here because sometimes your question and my answer is going to help somebody else as well or your question and one of your peers answer. So post them out here if you've got that, uh, if, if you can, and email me if personal. Uh, speaking of email, how do you find uh, my email address? Well, it's just like most of the uh, anyone else in the class. If you go and you find my picture anywhere and hover over it and go to my profile, right, you'll be able to find my email address. Of course, there you're also going to find a link to the Office Hours discussion board. Excuse me, to the Office Hours virtual office, if you will. I will hold at least once a week uh, an Office Hour in this section. We will determine each week. Uh, or excuse me, each semester we'll we will determine what is the best hour for the class. And, and that's going to be the best way to um, find out how to get to office hours. Uh, I will also be posting, you may have noticed that when I was in the calendar section for the uh, semester, a recurring schedule for when office hours is. And I'll be putting a link to the virtual office hour there as well. So that'll help you find it there. Um, I think that's uh, it for the, the tips and tricks. I did promise at the beginning of the video that I would show you a tip for getting through videos a little bit quicker. And this is something most of the content, uh, if not all of the content that I share with you guys, is actually uh, hosted on YouTube. And YouTube has a really great feature in there. I'll show you real quick. This is the page where I try to aggregate all of my content for you guys. Um, but And they're all done on YouTube. If you click on one of these, it starts the YouTube video playing. Right, you can watch it here. You've got all your YouTube controls, or you could click on the little YouTube icon and go to the YouTube uh, page itself, right, and watch it there. But the one thing that a lot of people don't know that you can do inside of YouTube is down here in the settings section, you actually have the ability to change the speed of the video that's being played. A and so if you find maybe that I'm dragging on or I'm not talking fast enough for you, or you, you want to kind of skim through because you, you're getting it and you're understanding it, but you want to make sure you're not missing anything, that I'm not going to touch something at the end of the video that's highly important, then you can uh, actually uh, set the videos to play at 1.25, 1.5, or even 2x speed. If you're one of those people that can comprehend things going that fast, feel free to do that. So that'll help you uh, kind of if, if you're – one of those students that feels like, oh, I don't need to watch these videos. I'm getting it. I still recommend watching them. Maybe speed them up so you can skim them a little bit faster. So that's kind of my tip there. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to this semester. I think that we are going to have a lot of fun. So I appreciate uh, your attention and appreciate the the uh, interactions you're going to have with each other because I know you guys are going to be awesome at that. And uh, let's just have a fun semester.